everyone. I'm Dr. Malika K. Fowler. I am passionate about inspiring change through interconnectedness and taking compassionate actions towards our fellow human beings. Today, I am going to continue the conversation um, about personal empowerment, looking at it through the lens of interconnectedness. I first of all want to say thank you to all of you who participated leaving me a comment, leaving me your many comments and likes, suggestions and so forth. I am truly grateful uh, for all of your gestures and feedback. Um, before we, we move on with our conversation today, I'd like to uh, clarify, this is in continuation with personal empowerment, as many of you asked if I can narrow my personal empowerment with, of course, looking through the lens of uh, interconnectedness, because as we all know, personal empowerment is such a huge topic, and in order to um, bring this through for this subject matter, which is uh, interconnectedness, I like to narrow that down through just that focus lens of um, interconnectedness and personal empowerment. So here we are. I spoke about my um, being passionate about inspiring change through interconnectedness and taking compassionate actions towards our fellow human beings. I also refer to my primary purpose. And that primary purpose, one of those purposes was about <clears throat> personal empowerment and follow through with self-reliance, self-development, and spiritual growth. And my intention is to go about breaking down what is that personal empowerment. As I briefly spoke uh, uh, or mentioned during my last three videos, um, the first step to interconnectedness, since this is a discipline for for us to to see ourselves interconnected, um, where we are um, intertwined with everything and everyone, and see ourselves through a lens of coexisting with the world, it is most important, it becomes vital that I break down um, that self when I, when I, um, when I drew on that board for some of you, those of you who have watched the last three videos, you're going to find when I was on my board where I drew a couple of the cycles that talks about your in internal and external world and put you right in the middle, how you are intertwined with everything and everyone uh, in the world on a multitude of dimensions. Um, before we can move any, any further into the conversation, through the lens of interconnectedness, the first thing being my primary purpose, as I just reiterated, is that personal empowerment. The reason why personal empowerment is most important is because you have to be personally empowered before you can empower others. So you have to have something within you before you can give to others. So in order to be intertwined with the world, and to be intertwined with everything and everyone where your internal and external environment seems to be more easy for you to coexist with those that are surrounding you, you have to first of all find within yourself what is necessary uh, to coexist with the people that are internally in my world and externally uh, 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 in my world. Just looked at it from that um, point of view. So this conversation today, as I've done quickly ran through a, a, a recap here, this conversation today is going to totally be around um, interconnectedness, but looking at interconnectedness through that lens of self-empowerment. And self-empowerment is the court to get started with understanding the aspect of interconnectedness. So personal empowerment, as I narrow down here for this subject matter for interconnectedness, even though it's such a big, uh, big uh, conversation that we can take on, if we do not narrow it down, we have, it, it, it's, been, it's going to be spoken in a general way. And if, it, if, if we are speaking about it in a general way, it's okay, but once we can align it and have a focus with it, then we'll do very well. So let's get started here. So personal empowerment, 
first of all, let's think about what is personal empowerment. So personal empowerment to oneself um, basically is truly is truly the bacon um, to our ultimate needs for our own existences. Um, we cannot be valuable to others if we do not have the means to be valuable to ourselves. And that's what I, uh, I was trying to say. That in order for us to coexist with uh, things that are around us, we must first seek to understand who we are. And seeking to understand who we are um, um, will mean that we, we have to truly have within us what is necessary in order to coexist with the world. And so thinking about that, who is then a pers personal empowered person? So when you think about a personal empowered person as a, a sort of definition, you're looking at someone who has some, some, some sort of independence for themselves. You're looking at a person who has an appreciation for themselves and having that appreciation for themselves, they have an appreciation for the things and, and, and they, they are so aware and mindful of, of their, their appreciation for the things that are around them. They identify with mankind and they built what is intimate relationship or relationship with others. They tend to uh, appreciate people on a profound level. Um, they are truly people who are more creative. Um, they truly, truly accept themselves. They, are, they, they, they believe in themselves. They believe things that they, they are, are, are so passionate about, compassionate about their, their work of helping others. Um, they're, they're actually people who have realistic, uh, realistic orientation to the world. If you think about someone who is personally empowered, these are qualities that come with a person who basically has the traits of becoming um, personally empowered. I do not directly want to tie personal empowerment with um, um, the hierarchy of needs of Maslow, which was, uh, he came up with this in 1943. He laid down a framework of uh, human motivation. As much as it's slightly related, um, when I use the word self-actualization or actualization with personal empowerment, I find it very necessary to give Dr. Maslow a credit of uh, his 1943 uh, hierarchy of needs. So ultimately, ultimately, if I talked about a personal empowered person, that person has become a self-actualized person who have reached the pinnacle of themselves and is now able to spread that pinnacle because they have this great amount of self-esteem. Their creativity is, is at its peak. Everything in, the li in their lives is basically at a peak where they are able to share because it's overflowing. They accept themselves for who they are. They take actions necessary. They are not necessarily self-centered people. They are out there to solve problems. They have a great sense of humor. They looked at things objectively, what are objectively and subjectively. They have a balance for themselves. They are highly, highly creative people. Of course, uh, they, they become sometimes unconventional, purposefully, and they have this establishment of, uh, they, they, they are very interpersonal. Uh, interpersonal because that is tied in with a, building a great relationship with people. In becoming uh, in, in personal, in personally empowered, you have to be a, a interpersonal person because internally for yourself, you have a relationship with yourself and that's why you have that with others. You understand the privacy. You also have a, have a way of knowing, understanding one's attitude. You have a strong, very strong moral compass. Ethics is one of the things that aligns with personal empowerment. And you have a standard that is uh, of, uh, of that of looking at a person as your human being and having respect, love, and compassion.
So having said what I've just mentioned about personal empowerment, I I narrow my my definition in in cor uh, correlating this with interconnectedness as is the subject is interconnectedness, and personal empowerment becomes sub to that. But how can one one best become interconnected with the world? Uh, uh, um, in order to do so, one of the first things that my primary purpose is to spell out here is that personal empowerment, self-reliance, self-development, spiritual growth, growth. So let's move that after we've talked a little bit about that personal empowered person. So looking at personal empowerment, when you think about all of the, the uh, traits that I spoke about personal empowerment, they finally become a self-actualized person there at their very core, at their peak, where they see the world and everything from a place of acceptance. There's no judgment. They have meaning to life, purpose, and so forth. So that core, so let's, let's now move into talking about how is it now when they have all of these quality as a personal empowered person, how are they going to coexist with the world, okay? So let's, let's do this. So the coexistences with, with the world for that person who is personally in power means that they have to, first of all, improve, um, you improve their personal empowerment and then see themselves as leaders. I spoke about many traits about someone who is personally in power. They are people who come to the table knowing that they may be right, but there is in one way of being right. Others are right in their own way. And you take, for example, the number six. When the number six is turned upside down or is, is laid in a certain way and you have two people on the opposite side looking at number six, I do believe that one sees number six as a nine and another person sees number six as a six. So that person who sees number six as a nine and the ones who see number six as a six, you want to ask the question, how is that person looking at number six? In what lens are they looking through? So someone who is personally in power, they are problem center. They come into a situation not to uh, allow a person feeling, feeling in a way that they are, are not contributing because if you looked at things from, from different spectrums or facets, you would see that things make meanings and meaningful to others could be meaningful to you. And that's why you have to be open without uh, acceptance to others, without having any judgment. So you're perceiving their reality through their lens, and that comes with tolerance. That's a personal empowered person. <laughs> and so... You have already personally empowered yourself. You've understand all of these nuances to how best is it that you, as a personally empowered person, then put yourself being a self-leader. And through that, what do you want to do? You want to uh, 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 empower or you want to lead others in a way that they are, they can feel that empowerment through your ways of interacting with them and through your ways of interacting with them, open a space of learning and for them to increase their horizontal of learning and accept you as you have accepted them. So in doing so, what do we do first? We must first of all seek to understand the core of our existences uh, through a personal empowerment lens. And that's what I, I spoke about. As I gave the gave a, a brief definition with, uh, about personal empowerment that is in alignment directly with uh, interconnectedness. At that point, as soon as you have defined yourself in all of these uh, ways of empowering yourself, it's much easier to, to uh, look through a lens and you can see others in that, in that formation. So doing so, it, what it does, it entails that uh, you, you ask yourself several questions and some very vital questions. You're asking yourself, who am I? That becomes the first step in your journey towards personal empowerment because when you ask yourself, who am I? Again, you begin to seek to understand who am I? 
why is it that I'm here and you looked at things from from a you look at things from from many different different ways than just saying that or being intolerant so say oh it has to be one way or no way um, you understand you understand yourself and if you do understand yourself and understand some of the nuance about human beings uh, you 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 naturally identify things with mankind you you naturally uh, uh, appreciate people for who they are and um, you find some some ways of uh, connecting and and, 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 and in, inducing some creativities with that relationship so I want you to think about this when you looked in the mirror in the morning when you just wake up and when you look in that mirror before you go to bed so we have the morning we have the in the night who do you see who do you recognize you are looking at yourself basically uh, then you ask yourself this question am I fully in tune with who I'm who I am the human being that I am are you really looking back at that human being that that you are are you asking yourself um, do you know what you what 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 are your values what do you stand for in this life and that's why I talk about that whole personal empowerment thing that's also talked about someone who is um, very ethic ethically uh, uh, inclined to see things want to be honest about how their interactions are with people and who basically are who tend to uh, transcends perhaps the environment than just thinking that oh yeah it's just a way that I can exist here because their coexistence is, is um, basically an intertwined effort they are intertwined with everything and everyone so they're not just going there to to tolerate they're going in there to transcend an environment and make it a place that they all can live and coexist with one another and do that in peace and harmony again that's a self-empowered person so then you ask yourself do you merrily float along the river of, 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 of life or do you forcefully take patterns and detach your direction and that's where I talked about a little bit thinking about that transcend where you go into a place and and instead of simply saying what it should be you're part of what everyone's saying you're working together instead of uh, uh, proclaiming that it has to be done in the XYZ way you're simply allowing each and every one to um, basically have a share share vision or share contribution because this is very important it's a very important point that um, that if you are not fully acquainted with yourself you can be acquainted with others and how possibly can you uh, navigate yourself in a direction that is conducive to yourself or even to others uh, you have if you lack that capacity of uh, inclination to know um, to know what's true or what's not that becomes a matter of, uh, of, of it's disturbing disturbing for for even you uh, or for others because you fully you, you definitely begin to see how resentful people people are with you and then you're not a, a, you're not personally empowering nor to yourself or to others so you want to go in there with that uh, that um, fresh uh, fresh mind of appreciating people and then you draw that all is is brought down to to a purpose so then is what is what's your purpose here so what's your purpose assuming that you know who you are at your very court um, you can give yourself permission uh, to this this create um, what is your purpose so and if you give yourself a permission to discreate your purpose you're doing that for others uh, you know what matters most in life and what matters most in life drives you with that intention to to be able to interconnect with others to be able to be kind 
to be able to uh, uh, um, build relationship with others, to be able to identify uh, um, human beings that uh, 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 that you you and them are the same, to be able to uh, uh, profoundly see others as you would like to see yourself, to be able to see be aware of what your surroundings are in the situation. So. Knowing, knowing what your real purposes, uh, or purpose are, or eight purposes are, as I just illustrated quite briefly, you are pretty, pretty much, pretty much, in a way, intertwined with everything and everyone. So, as another illustration, if, um, if, it, if at your core you have a desire to assist human beings, then perhaps your purpose would be, or should be, uh, to serve others. And we're using this example just for the fact that the lens of personal empowerment is true, is looking at interconnectedness. So let's, let's not, let's, let's remind, let me remind my listener that, that personal empowerment is teed down to interconnectedness. So the example is using that alignment. So in that respect, if you, uh, that illustration that talks about your core and desire where you like to assist other human beings, uh, then perhaps your purpose would be to serve others. So then your intention is all in alignment with that purpose that you would like to serve others. And what that, what is this? This is like a great, great example of where you are lying your beings with your purpose in this uh, respect. Then you want to uh, ask yourself here again, okay, so then what do I feel about XYZ? I just knew XYZ as it could be just about anything you, you're thinking about relating to my purpose. And, and perhaps if we say X, we can filter XYZ with human beings, uh, that is relating to your purpose. So the person at your courts um, dictates your purpose, which then enables you to engage in some sort of actions with human beings, which I just I said, X, Y, Z, or so forth. Um, so let's do a little bit of extrapolation with this above uh, illustration. Um, maybe if you decided to open a nonprofit business, to aid disenfranch disenfranchised children that is in Liberia or Syria. We're still, again, our self-empowerment is directly in alignment with interconnectedness, and we're looking at interconnectedness from an internal and external. I just want to remind the listener. And so these examples are tied or in alignment with that interconnectedness. So we just use another example here as if you're opening, you have the intention, the purpose here is to open a nonprofit business and you would like to aid disenfranchised children that are in or live in Liberia or Syria. That would then be your goal to support your purpose. So you're supporting that purpose of um, helping others. You are internally connecting with others. And that is which consistent with the person you are at your core. There's some form of self-empowerment. When we spoke about self-empowerment, there's also things that we talk about. You being aware of a real situation. You have a, a, a sort of a judgment that is fair uh, to others. You, you're well-balanced. You looked at situations where you go in and you, you allow people to have a need of their privacy, but yet you make people comfortable. I mean, you have all of these. Um, you embrace things. You embrace it from the way you see it and not project your thoughts on people or some sort of infringement that they have to be, but you rather see it as how we can coexist with each other here. So in doing so, what are you simply doing? So you have a purpose here with two, two examples we gave. So the second one was there. If you felt that you needed, you have a need to be self-empowered by supporting or helping uh, needed children in Liberia or Syria. 
and with that you move along to do the necessary things to help support these children so you set up that that purpose that came an intention purpose and then you set up that with your goal so in support of your your goal you will then what what are you what next are you going to do you're going to create some sort of objective measures to do what i say to actualize yourself because true that when i talked about the self actualize and i briefly pointed out through my brief explanation about self empowerment i i did say that i would like to give dr dr maslow credit his 19th dr abraham maslow 1943 the hierarchy needs where he spoke about the self actualization and the and because i'm referring to uh when you support uh in support of your goal you you will create an objective measures and that objective measures is to actualize it and when you actualize it you of course you're actualizing yourself you've been self empower and that self actualization as maslow puts it back in 1943 is still news up to the day's date is where basically you find yourself at the pinnacle of your your own life you are basically a person of uh morality you're a person of uh great creativity you 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 are problem solver you values the uh, human being mankind but that self actualization is because you have felt that need of who you are you you have officially arrived at a spiritual place you are so self actualized that now when you take a goal you cre- you you create that goal into your you you lay an objective how you're going to get that goal done and you measure that goal through the ways that you are going to be actualized so then it says what specifically will you do and when will you do it that's just that's just uh moving on with that objective that's more of the tactical aspect of it so i know that the 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 questions that i ask are little complex could be complex but it's really simple and pragmatic to the whole personal empowerment and i use those two examples as way as in line uh personal empowerment with of course to the lens of interconnectedness because the the personal empowerment that is tied directly to interconnectedness is uh the discipline of breaking how is it that a person can be intricately connected with everything and everyone or be intertwined with everything and everyone on a multitude of dimensions so this is how this came in so here is the thing you have come to know the true you now your beliefs your values and your thoughts have developed a purpose you have aligned yourself with a purpose you are self actualized you feel everything and because of that self actualization of yourself it becomes a necessary thing where now you're taking all of these things you you have developed a purpose you align it with you the truth you is in you and from that purpose you develop a goal and that goal you develop to support that purpose so you develop an objective steps to support all of your 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 needs for your goals that you've intended to uh what are to give back to people in Liberia people in Syria or whoever is going to be these are just example So after you've done this here you are you are a self-empowered person you have got into the place in your life where you there's a a uh a realistical uh oriented person and you see yourself you truly have accepted others you've accepted yourself and so here you say how do i view my contribution to society and its impact So this answer um uh, the question about the question is answer above perhaps you view yourself by by feeling uh a uh, uh, self empower and your self empowerment allows you to also uh uh tie that with that being self actualized because at, at that point then I won't need to explain a whole range of that self empowerment and what happened is that you find a purpose in life in this respect you find a purpose 
to have a no profit. Where do I fit in this world? So if you've asked yourself um, the question here about um, how do I view my contribution to society and its impact, and then you say, oh, where do I fit in this world? Well, this question has many answers as, uh, as they're human, uh, you're, you're human being, and of course you exist, uh, you exist on this planet, but um, after we just spell out, um, we talked about two things that you you have uh, self empowered yourself to to be gave back to uh, uh, needed and disenfranchised children in Liberia and Syria, or help people around the world. Perhaps you fit right within a place where you have felt self empowered or self actualized, where you have accepted yourself for who you are. You have a self uh, uh, love for yourself, and in that respect, is able to uh, overflow by empowering yourself and um, helping others. Um, the thing about this is to think about nobody, nobody is allowed, and you are not going to allow anyone to determine how you fit in this world by being self-empowered because being self-empowered is in no one's uh, prerogative of making you self-empowered because the core of self-empowerment is you being in power and once you're in, in power is that you're giving yourself that permission to determine how you fit in this world and what makes you feel a sense of empowerment and of course that sense of empowerment I love to simply continuously allow that self empowerment with that place of your own self actualize, actualizing yourself you have um, gotten to the place in your life where you know and own a lot of things that you 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 you're going to do you have a road map it is not to say that you do not actually take advice from others or direction from others, but you at a place where you have a full acceptance of who you have become, whether it's the like of others or dislikes of others. The most important thing is to know that you are doing the right thing and you are within the right state of being. And once you have that within yourself, you're you're even let able to uh, self-empower others because you have a deep, deep inclination of the learning that you've had along this journey. So that I believe that one of the most vital steps uh, taken to define that self-empowerment, which then of course takes you to that, uh, uh, to define your purpose. Think about, about this notion about, and this is, this is perhaps within and within so many other things that you're going to do in your life is the griffiness of where you have arrived in your life. And that griffin of where you have arrived in your life is truly that ultimate. And that's what makes uh, Dr. Maslow uh, um, with that self-actualization that I knew um, from the, the notebook of Dr. Maslow became quite uh, uh, um, vital is because when he laid out his 1943 uh, a motivation and, uh, hierarchy of needs, that self-actualization was the last court on his list. And that has been discussed through many disciplines and subject matters. And that is where, at the pentacle, pentacle of yourself, you have become more spiritual. If I may put it in that way, you have um, become more spiritual. You have found meaning to yourself. You have found purpose to yourself. You have found a way of creating the person you are. And you have come to a place where there is there is such an achievement that is unique to your own self and that achievement that becomes unique to your own self you're very confident of everything every interactions you put yourself into 
And just name it along the list uh, 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 as you go on. And with that, you have totally, totally allow yourself to be fulfilled and to be empowered. And with that empowerment, you have also in this respect with the lens of interconnectedness, you can interlay connect with the world where you can intertwine with everything and everyone through a different through through a dimensions that basically is is endless because in doing so when you have empowered yourself and you have interlay uh, 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 interconnect have inter uh, interlay connected with the world you have definitely allow yourself to be and to be is not at the capacity of anyone's direction is that your own capacity and your ability to give the world exactly who you are and what you stand for and what you stand for doesn't mean that's what others stands for but it's not it's not anything wrong you have a great your self-image is 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 identifying with with the person you have become uh, you are truly truly able to see others and accept others without prejudice um, you have a a, a need of uh, of um, believing others without judging them without proclaiming that they have to be the way you want them to be like I said you you easily is transcended into that environment of wanting to coexist and that coexistence is, is also the word for interconnectedness and it's at that point where even though you find yourself a different person but you also find yourself a person who fully accepts the world interact with the world improving the world creating self-esteem for yourself and for others approaching the world with an attitude that will cause uh, change instead of being resistant to it you are also um, in tune with everything and everyone within your surrounding I simply would like to say that I truly hope that I was able to break down uh, self-empowerment in alignment with uh, with interconnectedness and engage you in a in a way that it's uh, is uh, fulfilling to uh, interconnectedness and and I'm hopeful that my next video I can provide for you uh, on a a practical level where I would have some ways I would identify um, um, solutions or ways of how that existence is, exists or how better we can understand and know um, where we are with that um, interpersonal and um, talked about how is it that uh, the strategy put into news of uh, uh, interpersonal uh, with uh, with our in, um, personal empowerment? Again, personal empowerment isn't just a subject matter that is is as simple to talk about, but it gets much easier if it's narrowed down with interconnectedness for this um, uh, conversation. So. I want to say, um, as I leave you, I want to say thank you for listening to my video. Um, being a personal empowered person, um, a personal empowered person sees uh, a person from a lens of acceptance. A personal empowered person see, uh, sees a person where they have a sense of concern. And a personal empowered person sees a person where they seek to look for the good in that person and create a sense of oneness with uh, that person, their feelings, 
and also um, create a sense of respect and um, knowing that that they are not only the person that exists but they can look through the lens or lenses of others and and uh, find find within others what their beliefs thoughts and understandings are about the world because being a self-actualized person you find yourself uh, with these characteristic where you're perceiving reality instead of in instead of infringing reality but you perceive it through the lens of others and you you uh, allow your thoughts and emotions to float with your situation you become an aware person your awareness is in tone you're also a mindful person where you definitely understand uh, to knowing when or when not to to uh, do or or say things that could be harmful to others and so at the end of the day you're very independent and with that independences of uh, personal empowerment you simply allow others to be through a means of compassion and love I will end this by saying do unto others as you would have them to do unto you if we keep in mind that proclamation of doing unto others as you would have them do unto you you truly will find meaning of becoming a self-empowered person and you are truly able to inter interconnect with the world with everything and everyone on a different dimension I'd like to say thank you for for tuning in today once more is truly a a privilege and a great pleasure to be back with you uh, thank you for all of your suggestions and your likes I look forward to uh, connecting with you I want to say have a beautiful day and goodbye <laughs>